welcome to this Cogtoberfest session. Um, the theme tonight is academic social sciences. Um, so we're excited to have you here. And just so you know who I am, my name is Christopher Munoz Colleen. I'm an uh, assistant director of admissions for access and inclusion at Clark. And we really wanted this session to be an in-depth look at what it's like to study at Clark, but specifically in the social sciences. Um, we have two professors and a current student with us. And we're gonna open actually by having each person here introduce themselves, their area of expertise, uh, just so you get a sense of who's here. Um, but uh, just so you know, before we get started, um, this is gonna be an open Q&A after. So we really wanna let you all steer us. Um, at, if you wanna enter questions, you'll see below there's a Q&A bar. Uh, that's where you wanna enter those questions and you're actually welcome to start right now. <laughs> Uh, but if you have a technical issue, let us know in the chat. Or if you want to share where you're from, please continue to do that in the chat. That is really exciting to see um, the range of where people are coming from. Um, so uh, like I said, feel free to enter those questions in the Q&A. And, and also, there are a lot of you here. So I just want to say, if we don't get to your question, uh, we will answer it over email, just so you know. We will do our best, though. Um, so let's actually get started with some introductions. So how about Bobby, Jackie, and Andrew? Could you introduce yourselves? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Bobby. I'm a current senior here at Clark. I'm an international student from Japan. Um, I'm an economics and business management double major, and I'm the captain of the varsity cross country team here. Um, outside of all that, I'm a student ambassador. That's why I'm here on the panel. Um, and I'm also part of the um, Clark University Investment and Trading Society and the um, Photo Society as well. And so that's kind of what I do around Clark. Um, that's kind of who I am. And I actually took a class with Professor Gagan when I was a first year student here. Great, thank you. And Professor Gagan, can you introduce yourself? Hi, so I'm Jackie Gagan, I'm chair of the economics department, and I take great pride that I convinced Bobby into becoming an econ major. So I take full credit for that. Uh, my, for, uh, so I'm zooming in from my home in Arlington, Massachusetts, and my chocolate lab waffle is on the couch next to me. So if she shows up, that's who that is. And I have lived in, I grew up in New York, did my undergrad in New York City. Um, Went to grad school at UC Berkeley and did a postdoc at, at University of Maryland. So I think I've lived in almost every place that I'm seeing in the in the chat. So that's who I am. Thank you. And Andrew. Hey, everyone. I'm Andrew Stewart. I'm an associate professor of psychology. Um, I'm a social psychologist. And so that's a little bit different than clinical psychology, developmental and I mostly do research on prejudice, discrimination, stereotyping, those types of topics. Um, I went to, well, I'm an army brat. So I grew up, my dad was in the army. I traveled around a lot as a kid. Uh, I went to high school and college in Colorado. And then for graduate school, I finished my, with my PhD in, uh, from the University of Connecticut. And so I've been here at Clark since 2014. And uh, so this is my seventh year. Great, thank you. Um, so, like I said, um, this is going to be really an open Q&A session, and we're going to let you uh, show us what you're interested in. Um, but first, just to get things started, we wanted to ask kind of a beginning question for each panelist, um, which is, can you tell us more about your work? It's very open, and we have a mix of students and professors here, so I thought that would be the most open way to begin. Uh, and how about we'll start with you, Bobby. So tell us more about your work. I know that you're writing. Welcome everybody. Thesis, this is our Clarktoberfest. Yeah, so as Professor Gagan said, uh, she convinced me to become an economics major and I happen to do well enough to be able to uh, join the honors thesis uh, class and program. So uh, I'm currently writing uh, honors thesis or really just getting started on it on um, how uh, shocks in oil prices impact uh, stock returns uh, of different industries and, and their firms. Um, so 
yeah, that's really interesting. I've done a lot of res research so far, just reading literature and how to do the research and um, conducting specific um, regressions and things like that um, in order to find my results. So uh, that's been really interesting to do. Um, but aside from that, um, out of, outside of econ, I'm also uh, a management major, like I mentioned before. So um, I've been doing um, work in the management department as well. Not, not research, but just like homework and things like that. Um, but I think one of my favorite things about doing work with the management department is kind of just, it's, it's very interactive. Um, and my first class that I took, uh, I was called um, the Arts and Science of Management. We were able to actually work with a local nonprofit um, called Horizons for Homeless Children. And we basically did a event where we uh, recruited students to do an internship there. And we also did a cleanup at their shelter. So that was a really cool experience um, and really got me out of my shell and like outside of Clark too. So um, that was a really, really fun experience. And yeah. Great, thank you. And uh, how about you, Jackie? Can you tell us a bit more about your work in the econ department? Sure. So. I've been at Clark since 1996, so I've done lots of things, but I'm going to tell you about what I'm working on now. So I am an agricultural economist, so I've done lots of stuff on land use and local food, but I'm currently working on a project with a professor in the business school who is a sociologist on the impact of COVID on craft breweries in New England. And so, um, so we started this project before COVID hit uh, with my undergraduate food econ class and um, started working on beer economics. So that's what I'm spending all my time doing these days. <laughs> I actually really wanted to take that class, but I yeah. wasn't able to. Such a shame. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll give Great. you the books. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, how about you, Andrew? Can you give us a bit more insight into your work? Uh, maybe what, what you focus on? I know you alluded to it before. Yeah, so in, ge in general, I focus on intergroup relations is what they call it. So gender, race, sexual orientation, issues like that. What I'm really, in, in particular, what I'm interested in is intergroup violence. So, you know, things like sexual assault, hate crimes, police brutality, those types of things and people's responses to them. Uh, for example, protest. So I do a lot of research in protest and those sorts of topics. Um, uh, yeah, and so, you know, it's really sad, but I also do, <laughs> I also do a lot of intervention research as well. So I do a lot of like uh, uh, programming in particular for, for men, college men, masculinity, um, sexual assault prevention, those kinds of, those kinds of things. So I, I study both like sad things, but also ways that we can sort of improve it. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And, uh, you know, actually, I think at this point we can turn to some of the questions that have come in the Q&A. And just as a reminder to everyone, uh, this really is meant to be as a conversation. So feel free to submit those questions throughout this, the entire session. Um, so we'll get started with a question from Hannah, who said, hello from Wakefield, Massachusetts. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I want to go into neuropsychology and neuroscience. And I was wondering if Clark had any classes that focus on neuropsych. Um, I know you don't have the major, but you have a really great psychology department. What would you suggest? So it sounds like Andrew might be the person for this question. Well, I mean, there's a there's a big difference between neuropsychology and neuroscience. And uh, so neuropsychology is really sort of like a, a subfield in clinical psychology. And they're primarily focused on, you know, medication, uh, those types of things. Um, <clears throat> And so we don't really have a, any courses in neuropsychology. There are courses in neuroscience that are offered in conjunction with the biology department. So uh, there's a neuroscience course there. We also have a lot of, the psychology major requires you to have a minor or a second major. And the really common sort of thing that people do is they double major in psychology and biology. And uh, we have a lot of those. We had one student who just graduated maybe last year, no, two years ago, and she got into a PhD program in, in a neuroscience, behavioral neuroscience. And so she's got the, the training that she needed here, so. Great, thank you. And this is a question that sounds like for everyone from Brittany who asked, how has building faculty student relationships been throughout the trans tr transition to online? So um, feel free to say a bit about 
faculty student connections in general at Clark. I think that's also um, interesting to know, but how has that been throughout this transition to COVID? Um, in general, just uh, pre-COVID, I guess it's, um, I feel like the, it's very easy to develop a relationship with your professors and uh, peers, um, which I think is like one of the best things about coming to Clark. Um, it's very easy to just walk up to your professor and be like, hi, my name is this, this, and this, and this is what I do. And I'm really excited to take your class and professors remember you. Um, and apparently I, I had, I didn't think Professor Gagan would remember me after four years, but, um, you know, obviously Professor Gagan remembered me. Uh, I took one class with her, um, like my first year here, but she obviously remembers me. So, um, you know, professors do typically remember you and, um, especially when it comes to, um, just being able to establish a relationship with them. It's very easy. I was able to get an internship. Uh, through uh, one of my professors, I just, you know, I went up to her and I was like saying, I was talking to her and I was like, hey, like, I'm really struggling right now looking for an internship. Uh, do you have any ideas? And we ended up talking for a couple hours. And she said, I'll reach out to a couple of alumni, see if I can find you something. And because of that, now I have an internship for the spring of next year, um, which is really great and exciting. And also in terms of the uh, transition to COVID, um, or on, transition online uh, kind of uh, situation. A lot of the professors actually reached out. Um, my uh, academic advisor in the economics department, Professor Seneva, uh, she reached out to all her advisors, sent out an email um, and said like, hey, like, I hope you all are doing well. Um, you know, re uh, let's set up a Zoom call sometime if you are free and um, we can talk about how your semester is going and things like that. So I feel like the professors here at Clark are really caring about uh, students and I've definitely had a really great luck with the uh, professors I've met. Great, thank you. Anyone else want to speak a bit to that relationship, uh, maybe with your students during this time? So I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. So I'm teaching my undergrad course this semester as a hybrid course. So students can come to class and be socially distanced. And then I'm also, um, students can also zoom in. So that was, I did that so that students who, international students who couldn't get back into the country could have the option. And then if there's just any student who's on campus who just doesn't want to, you know, come to a room, um, has that option too. So, you know, I mean, the things that, and I'm sure many of you are experiencing this, you know, in high school. So teaching in person means we all have masks on and we're six feet away. So that's, that's been an adjustment because the base um, really says a lot, right? So trying to, you know, learn how to teach and interact with uh, students, missing that uh, has, has, has been a challenge, but um, and then the students who are Zooming in, I have a TA for the class who, you know, is paying attention to the Q&A and, you know, chat so that he can, you know, help me with that. So um, making a, a good situation, you know, best we can with a bad situation. I'm being really flexible with students if they're dealing with health issues or whatever, because, you um, keeping people safe and, and healthy is, is the most important thing, so. Great, thank you. And Andrew, did you wanna add anything or has Jackie kind of covered the picture yeah, I mean, there? I mean, before all this, you know, people just knock on my door, show up. I had one student who just like came to my office, knocked on his door, but this is before. And uh, he was like, can I join your lab? And there's only like five spots available. And uh, I was like, I'm really sorry, but I can't go over the, the course thing. And then the next day he came back, knocked on my door again. He's like, hey, I saw a spot opened up. Can I get in? I was like, yeah, of course you can join. And he turned out to be a really good uh, research assistant. Now I find I have a, a research group of five students and uh, we meet weekly and we chat. And I find it really like super, we've chatted on Zoom and we, we sort of, uh, it's very casual. We, chat, talk about things, and, um, and then we do some research and stuff like that. But I don't know, I, I feel more relaxed, actually, a little, it seems like a little more, less formal of a, of a situation. 
but I'm also teaching one of my classes in person um, as well. So, yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, so we have a question from Molly. This is for both students and professors. How do you feel that the Clark environment allows you to explore your interests differently than you would be able to in another school? So what are some things about Clark's curriculum and environment that would allow students you know, in the social sciences um, to explore these interests differently or kind of uniquely? So um, one, one thing I want, would like to highlight, which may or may not answer the question, is that, you know, so um, the three of us here are in programs that have PhD, pro in departments that have PhD programs, right? So, uh, so we have a small econ undergraduate major because, you know, small liberal arts kind of, you know, undergraduate feel. But in my courses, I've got PhD students that I'm training to become professors who are um, also interacting with students and creating a multi-generational learning community. So, uh, you know, other schools do that, but what's I think is important to think about is that Clark's size as the, you know, I'm in the smallest PhD granting economics department on the planet, right? So um, I think that's a unique characteristic that you wouldn't get at other types of places like Clark. Uh, yeah, that's a great point. So Clark is a research university and we're a small school of 2,200 undergraduate students, around 800 grad students. So that combination is really rare. And I think that that shows exactly what you were saying. I think in general, um, when it comes to just how the way the school is set up is um, just like how we have to have like uh, take PLS requirements, like um, just different perspectives that you have to take outside of your major. Um, I think those are really useful uh, just because I never would have taken a history class um, or like an arts class if I didn't, you know, if, if it really wasn't required. And I took photography in my arts class and uh, we actually talked about uh, Kodak, which is a, you know, photography company, or I guess they're more of a chemical company, but uh, we talked about that and how, you know, they were a huge part of the uh, um, business and uh, se sector of uh, Rochester, uh, New York. And basically, once they kind of didn't do as well uh, business wise, the whole city kind of didn't do as well either. Um, and we talked about that in our photography class and it came up in my business class. And so it was just interesting to be able to connect those two things. And uh, being able to learn about things in other disciplines and bringing it into um, your own discipline is like a really useful thing to do. I was talking to my friend uh, who works at Franklin and Templeton, which is a wealth management firm. And he was saying that everyone who works there, they only like know about finance and one other thing. Um, and so as long as you know about, it, as long as you're like an expert at one thing, but you know a couple of other things, um, I think that could be really uh, useful and like you could become a really great like generalist, for example. Um, so I think like being a liberal arts school really helps the fact that, you know, you're able to explore different aspects of your um, interests. I was just going to, that's a great point. So Bobby, you kind of hit on the other point that is so central to Clark, which is that we have a liberal arts curriculum, right? So you have this liberal arts curriculum in a small setting and a research university. I think these are really the things that make Clark unique. The other one that came to mind for me was um, pop courses or kind of experiential learning. So, um, you know, I think of it like baseball practice. If you wanted to learn the sport, you can't just watch people play baseball. You actually have to play baseball yourself. Um, so could one of the professors here speak a little bit to maybe an example of some experiential learning uh, that your students have engaged with? Um, so I sort of talk a lot, so apologies. So my, my food econ class is one of these pop courses. So the first time I taught it, I had the students do a complete food inventory of every grocery store, every bodega, every 7-Eleven in Worcester to do an analysis of 
you know, are there neighborhoods in Worcester that are a food desert? So they were out collecting data and then doing analysis. Um, so that's, and presenting it at Academic Spree Day. And um, so that was an example of op. Right, and Andrew, you mentioned research earlier. So you have a lab. Um, this is a question that another student asked, um, I think in response to um, the earlier comment about PhD students. So Hannah asked, because there are PhD students, are there fewer research opportunities for undergrads? How is that balance created? No, but having lots of grad students means there's tons of additional opportunities to sort of be involved in, in research because not only do, are you working closely with the faculty member, but then they're working with the graduate students and you might be more interested in the grad students project. And so you can join in with that. And so you, you become sort of part of a bigger, bigger team and you get to learn a lot more um, from different things. So, yeah, there's, a, there's always spaces available, always research that we're doing and uh, yeah. I, I think it goes back to that point about us being a quite small research university, just as it is a great setting if you are interested in kind of going beyond the classroom and doing your own work, your own research or engaging like with the community um, through your academic work. Yeah, I had a student who was, uh, she was interested in interpersonal violence experiences. And so she, uh, but she's from San Francisco. And so she wanted to, over the summer, she worked at some program, <clears throat> uh, some educational program for these fifth graders, I think. And so she, we designed a whole research study and then uh, she got some LEAP funding um, and then some additional grant funding from our department to go and to do this project. So she went out there, recruited all these fifth graders to complete a survey about um, you know, different issues in the community. And then she was able to sort of uh, use that data to then uh, complete her honors thesis in our department, so. And that's a really common example of things that happen at Clark. Um, I, I always say that if you come to Clark, it is not a bubble institution. You will definitely get to know members of the community. Um, and actually, this is a related question from Luke. So Luke says, hello from Worcester, Massachusetts. Hope you are all well. Thank you for hosting this meeting. Um, so I had a Zoom meeting with the admissions officer, and they mentioned that it was really often or frequent that Clark students will have an opportunity to take an internship. Um, I was wondering just how the process of how a student would get an internship and what one might look like for the major of economics. So is there any insight anyone could provide into students getting internships, perhaps related to social sciences and what an example of an economics internship could look like? So I think Bobby should answer this question because he's a student and he's done these things and he has friends who are students and have done these things. So Bobby, take it away. All right. So um, right now, I, a lot of students are looking for internships and things like that. So what you really want to do is start talking to the career services or the career center. Um, they're basically there to help you out uh, with resumes, cover letters, anything like that, just to get you started. Um, and we also have a job fair coming up soon. Um, and so that's a really great place for you to look at. Um, and when it comes to, you know, what might an internship look like for an economics major, that could look like literally anything. Um, because there's so many different roles that fit for econ majors. Um, and a lot of the times, uh, internships aren't really restrictive of what majors you have to be. Um, so you know, um, it's pretty easy to just go through LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Indeed and um, kind of find jobs that you might be interested in. Um, specifically right now, um, I'm taking a class called Money and Banking, and we just did something called the Federal Reserve Challenge. Um, and basically off of that, um, you know, the Federal Reserve has their own internships as well. So for instance, if you had gotten involved in the Federal Reserve Challenge, you could apply for an internship at the Federal Reserve. And so that's more, I think that's like very econ related. Um, but a lot of the times um, when we talk about econ internships, uh, you'll be working with like data or doing some kind of regressions and statistics and things like that. So um, I think it can look like a lot of different things. Um, 
I know a lot of people who have gotten into finance uh, through majoring in economics, but I don't know, Professor Gagan, do you know of anyone who's gotten an internship recently or in the past? So, uh, it's a bit of a blur to me because there's been this pandemic and I'm trying to write like, so right now the world is very different, right? So, um, but I know that's a, you know, a key thing that people want, you know, that kind of experience, right? And it's really, you know, it's a resume builder, real world experience. Um, a lot of data work is, is likely, right? Because we're good at that. So spreadsheets. <laughs> And um, this is actually a related question. Um, so we had a question from someone who was curious about internships, uh, but in the political science department. So here's what I can say to Lindsay. And also we had a couple other questions about poly or political science in this session. Um, so we, we'd be happy to connect you. Actually, we have a number of admissions ambassadors who major in political science, but just so you get a sense of what that major offers, there's three tracks, American politics, comparative politics, and international. Um, but we're hoping that everything you're hearing right now applies to the other fields in the social sciences, just so you know. So sociology, um, political science, the same things apply here. Students are just as engaged in real world learning. Um, and the statistic that Luke, I think was mentioning is that 85% of Clark students will do an internship by senior year. So an overwhelming majority will not only do an internship, but they'll do it by their fourth year at Clark. Um, so just, you know, it's a really common experience regardless of the field. Um, so. So Chris, if I can interrupt again. Sure. So yeah. one, of the, one, of the good, one of the many good things about Clark being so small is that the faculty all know each other, right? So, you know, I'm buddies with, the faculty in political science. So if I had students in my, you know, Econ 11 class, the one that Bobby took with me, who was like, oh, I'm interested in this. Like, I know how to pick up phone, you know, the phone and say, you need to talk to my good friend, Professor Williams, she'll set you up, right? So um, we're not in silos, right? So that's, that I think is, is another uh, key feature uh, that, that keeps me at Clark and makes my, makes my day-to-day -day life good. I would just underline that. That is so uh, the experience that Clark, I think the theme that has come through and continues to come through is community. I mean, our supplemental question is about community. Uh, when people come to visit, the word that they always say is community. Um, and I think you see it not only among students, but staff and faculty as well. Um, so thank you. That's a great point. Um, we had a question for Andrew. Uh, so hi, my name is Claire. I'm from Florida. Uh, this question is for Andrew. What made you decide that you wanted to research in social psychology, specifically gender, race, the protests, et cetera? And what is some research that you have done? <laughs> well, I, I don't, I was really interested in uh, prejudice and discrimination very early on when I was in undergrad. Um, and, you know, most people who are going to psychology, they think it's just sort of clinical. They want to do therapy. You know, there's lots of people who do that. But my, my interest was solely in sort of these big social issues that I really feel passionate about, I care a lot about, I want to find solutions to. And so I sort of maneuvered through undergrad to sort of uh, to get those experiences. I worked at an Asian cultural center when I was in college. I worked, uh, I, I participated in this men's sexual assault prevention program when I was in college. Um, and then, you know, it, all of that sort of just bolstered my interest in it. And then I found that social psychology had sort of the theories and the methods that allowed me to understand some of these things and to do something practical. And so that's just the area that I, that I went into and chose to do. So uh, what was the second part? Uh, the second part was, um, what are some research projects you've done? And I'm actually gonna also highlight Thomas's question, which is within psychology, is there only research done in social psychology? So what, what research have you done? And then is it true or is it question. possible? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. try to remember these. <laughs> what research is I've done research all over the world. So I've done uh, a study on protests in 2013 in Istanbul, Turkey. I was there, collected data from the protesters. 
Um, they were really mad at the president. They're still mad at the president, but um, anyway. Um, and then I've done work on uh, men's protest, uh, anti-racist protest. Uh, let's see, I've done sexual assault prevention work. We, we studied the Arab uprisings in 2010, 2011, and some of the, the motivations for, for doing that around the world. Um, yeah, and I already forgot the other, oh, that's right. Yeah, I mean, we have three sort of sub-disciplines in psychology that we focus on at Clark. I'm in social psychology. Uh, we have a developmental psychology program. And so they study children, uh, emerging adults. Um, and then the clinical program is, I think, the biggest program in terms of faculty. And they study everything from relationships to motivation to uh, diverse families and adoption sexual orientation, to intimate partner violence, substance use. Um, there's a lot of different topics and each faculty is sort of active in research. And um, yeah, so it's not just social psychology, even though in social psychology, we do it better. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Um, and this is a related question uh, from Anya who asked, how easy is it for psychology students to find internships? And are there some kind of common internships that these students do? Yeah, I mean, we have a, in, in the major, we have a requirement for research, um, but it, you can fulfill that requirement by doing research or by completing an internship. So we have a course specific for internships um, that, you, that a lot of students take. And so what they typically do is we have a lot of relationships with organizations in the Worcester community. Um, and, so they'll, I, uh, and so they'll go in, uh, uh, those internship opportunities are posted. I forget, the, what's the website with Handshake? Is that mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so they'll go on there, they'll look for those opportunities. A lot of our faculty will know certain organizations. So for, I, for example, I do consulting with a nonprofit in Connecticut. They do sexual assault prevention work. And uh, one of my students wanted to work with there. So I connected them with that sort of opportunity. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of places that uh, are looking for psychology students to do internships. And then you can get academic credit or major credit uh, for, uh, by doing an internship as well. Great, thank you. I think that really just, if there's some themes that have come out in this session, it is the community and also the connections with the community through real life learning. So when, uh, Andrew, when you just said that we have connections in the Worcester community that are kind of already paved roads for connecting students with internships, I think that is just um, absolutely true at Clark and why that number is so high for students who, who do do internships here. Um, so thank you for that. And let's see, we had a question. Um, this is related to research, but for everyone. I was wondering if as a freshman, I would have the ability to start my own research and work along with professors. What would your recommendation be for someone who wants to get started right away with research at Clark? So, um... So I think in, in, in economics, that's a bit of a challenge because you need to know something, right? So, you know, like the first intro courses are, you know, here's our theories, here are our questions, you know, an intro course on statistics. So, uh, you know, I love enthusiasm and, and a desire to do that, but within economics, like it would be really hard to do anything meaningful without some, you know, some groundwork, right? So, um, you know, maybe as a sophomore, right? Um, and I, you know, like the, uh, the the food course that I that I keep mentioning, you know, I like it when a sophomore takes that course and thinks about, oh, I'm gonna keep on working on this and do it as an honor thesis, right? So that they get to build on, you know, and progress through, uh, you know, stuff that they found interesting and, and keep on working on it, so. I will just add in, I've, I heard a very similar story from the student side, uh, actually from a biology student who came in ready to do research in freshman year and her advisor said, appreciate the enthusiasm and, and take the intro course and then we'll see in sophomore year. And that is when she started in his lab. Um, so I think that's that's kind of the common track at Clark. I, I did, a, I, was, I was really interested in research when I first started. And so I started when I was in college in my first year and I've tried to 
if anybody expressed any interest in research, I had to give them something that they can do, right? So we, we, uh, they can attend the lab meetings, even if they don't, you know, necessarily have the skills to contribute fully, they can still participate and sort of sit in. Um, but, you know, there's like searching up articles or we do a lot of studies, not in person anymore uh, for now, but they can do things like enter data, you know, some of these sorts of tasks. And I, I usually try to find something for, for that just because I was that person. And so I wanted to do that for them. Yeah. Great, thank you. And uh, we had a question so maybe Bobby might be the best suited for this, but we'll see. So Lenora asked, how can students in this field do study abroad? Um, so I don't know if you, I don't think you went abroad, Bobby, but did you have friends who went abroad uh, in the econ department or in management? Yeah, so a lot of people in the econ department who want to study abroad go to the London School of Economics. That's a great program. And I really wanted to go, but I ended up not going, I had to finish my double major. So um, didn't go, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. And you get to go study at one of the best uh, schools in the world for economics. Although Clark's pretty great. Um, but um, yeah, so that's a huge opportunity that you have. You can also, there's also a variety of different programs um, that you can go on. I know there are programs where you can do internships while you're abroad. Um, you know, that might not be specifically just for econ majors, but um, those are things that economics majors can definitely do. Um, but yeah, um, usually for any of the majors, you should be able to study abroad and incorporate your major in it somehow. Yep, I would say it just ties in with everything we've said before about this being a smaller school. So um, what I've heard from students who do want to go abroad is that it's as easy as walking in the study abroad office and saying, here's what I'm majoring in, here's where I would maybe like to go, and when should I do it? Um, and they will work with you on finding a program that'll match up best. So thank you for that. And uh, we had a question, let's see, this is actually a great um, general question that I that might be interesting for all of you. It's from Anna who says, what is your favorite class that you've either taught or attended? It's like asking me who's my favorite child. <laughs> I mean, really. Uh, so I, whatever class I'm currently teaching, you know, it's, it's so that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> I actually really like, I'm gonna pick a favorite. I actually really like my first year intensive. I teach a first year intensive on the psychology of prejudice. And uh, this is, I'm doing it now. That's my in-person class now. And this is the third time I've taught it. And I just love like the, they're new to Clark and we get to hang out and talk about research and psychology and these really important topics. And it's uh, super fun. So I, I really like that class. Yeah. And they become my advisees and stuff too. So yeah. Right. So, so Bobby, there's only one answer to that question. Yeah, so I think um, I can only say that my favorite class was Econ 11, um, but I have a lot of favorite classes. Um, so I've taken a couple really interesting classes uh, like entrepreneurship, where I started my own photography business. Uh, I've taken um, social entrepreneurship, which was with pro uh, Professor... Um, Dr. Jordan, I don't know why I forgot his name, uh, Dr. Jordan. And we talked a lot about um, how to um, create a socially responsible business. And that was really interesting. On the other hand, I learned a lot about management uh, through my capstone class uh, in the management major. Uh, it's basically a strategic management class where we analyzed um, companies. Um, and so one of the things uh, we did was we took a look at Gap and said, what can they do better looked at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, um, their financial statements and things like that. And I, I made my, my own personal recommendation was that they should uh, collaborate with a streetwear artist. And that's exactly what they did like two months later, which is really interesting. Uh, they, they signed a contract with Kanye West for uh, the Yeezy line for the Gap. So after that, their, um, their stock value increased. And I was like, oh, wow, like this, it's funny how that works. Um, in the econ department, so many classes. Like, I just, honestly, I think, like, the economics classes have been the most interesting for me. 
Um, I'm really happy that I'm doing the honors thesis right now, although it's a lot of work. Um, I took a class called uh, Policy and Evaluation of Education in Developing Countries, and that, that was a really interesting class, and that really got me involved with the data side of um, econ and um, helped me understand what the statistics mean. Um, and so, yeah, those, I know I just named like 10 different classes, but like, those are all really great classes that I think everyone should take. Um, and if you, I saw a question earlier about uh, photography, but really there's a ton of different photography classes you can take and you can take um, photos of nature or portraits. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a lot of great stuff that you can do uh, in that class. <laughs> Well, that, that goes back to the liberal arts, right? That yeah. if you're an econ major, you're not only doing econ, you would also be able to take art classes, for example. Yeah. Um, I did want to speak to one point. So in the previous question about study abroad, there was a second part that I forgot to answer, which is about finances. Uh, just so you know, if it's a Clark approved program, your aid goes with you. So there's no abrupt shift in the costs. Uh, so that's one way to make all the programs more accessible that we already have an approved kind of road with. Um, Luke had a question also about study abroad and said, I heard that London School of Economics is selective. Is this true of all study abroads or is it just this specific program? Um, I can add in there and if anyone wants to say any more, uh, feel free. But I would say that not every program is selective with the study abroad. So that is a particularly selective program. That's a good point. Um, you do have to apply to the London School of Economics and be accepted to that program, but that's not true for every every offering. I think um, most people got into that um, the past couple of years, um, as far as because our students are really smart. Yeah, exactly, and people get there with scholarships too. Like they yeah. don't they don't pay anything. So yes, um, so. You know, I, I'm looking at the questions. I just want to put in a reminder that if we didn't get to your question today, we will get to it uh, over email. So uh, uh, we thank you, though, for your patience in the meantime. And actually, I'm looking at the clock, and I think it is time to wrap up this session. Um, but I did want to just thank you all for tuning in tonight, and also all of our panelists for sharing your experiences. I think this was a great introduction. Uh, into the social sciences at Clark. And like I've been emphasizing, this really is true across the disciplines. Um, everything you've heard about in terms of uh, experiential learning, the connections with professors, the fact, I mean, it's, it was honestly a happy coincidence that Bobby and Professor Gagan knew each other and had taken a course together. And I think that I'm glad that it worked out that way. Um, so for all of you who are listening, I just wanna emphasize that there is a lot happening in the world right now. Um, and there's a lot of screen time demands. And I just want to say thank you for spending some of that extra time with us. That is not a small thing to ask for right now. Um, so we're grateful that you chose to spend your time here. Um, just so you know, you, um, I think I speak for all of uh, everyone here when I say we're really happy to be in touch with you. And um, we have an email on the bottom. So as questions come up, you're always welcome to write. Just keep that in mind. Um, our next event for Clarktoberfest is for international students. It's tomorrow. I did want to mention that if you attend three of these sessions and you have a U.S. address, we will mail you a Clarktoberfest t-shirt. So I want a t-shirt. Yeah, you will get one. <laughs> that's yeah, actually yeah, that's super nice. nice. Yep, that's the panel panelist bonus is you get a Clarktoberfest t-shirt. <laughs> um, but thank you everyone for joining us and uh, go enjoy your Tuesday evenings. All right, stay safe, stay well. Take Bye, care, everybody. everybody. Bye. Bye.